is consciousness the unified field? It's an ambitious topic, and I think we can make a little progress if I stop to review for a bit what I mean by consciousness and what I mean by the unified field. Um, I'm going to start by summarizing in a minute or two. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hundreds of years of scientific progress on a single slide. And while the details may look daunting, it's really much simpler than it looks. What science has discovered in exploring deeper levels of reality is that our universe is structured in layers of creation. Layers of creation. From the superficially diverse, macroscopic, classical world of day-to-day -day perceptions, to the deeper levels of the molecule and the atoms and the nucleus and subnuclear particles, worlds within worlds within worlds. So the surface level of sensory reality is typically called the classical world. Underlying the classical world is the world of the molecule and the atom, which is the realm of quantum mechanics. Then there's the atomic nucleus and the subnuclear particles. That's the world of quantum field theory, relativistic quantum mechanics. And finally, the emergence of unified field theories, particularly based on the superstring. These theories locate a single universal field, a unified field of nature's intelligence at the basis of the surface diversity of the universe, fulfilling, in a sense, Einstein's lifelong dream to discover the unified source of the diversified universe. So while the world is superficially complex and enormously diverse, the deeper you go into the structure of reality, the simpler nature becomes, leading ultimately to the emergence, the discovery of fundamental unity at the basis of the surface complexity of the world. This is more than a philosophical discovery. This is really a rigorous mathematical formulation with predictive power, not enough. Um, predictive power in principle, and we can calculate and predict certain things about the universe, but unfortunately, although conceptually simple as we have seen, computationally superstring theory is perversely complex. But that's not going to stand in our way today. OK, what about this unified field? It's worth spending a minute to know about it. It is, as we'll see, not separate from ourselves. I'd like to argue that it is indistinguishable, that it is indeed our innermost self. So we have this fundamental field. We can call it, if you wish, an ocean of existence. Or I would like to say, and I'll explain what I mean by it, an ocean of intelligence at the basis of the emergence of the diversity of the universe. It's like an ocean of being. But it's a dynamic ocean. It's a dynamic field of intelligence. Quantum mechanics guarantees it's intensely dynamic. Because quantum mechanics says, the uncertainty principle, the deeper you go, the more dynamic nature becomes. That's why nuclear power is more powerful than chemical energy. The deeper you go, the more dynamic nature becomes. And we're talking about the infinitesimal scale, or Planck scale, the ultimate time and distance scale at the foundation of the universe, and hence virtually infinitely dynamic. So this universal field basically is shimmering within itself reverberating within itself, and percolating, as this very elegant chart shows, <laughs> percolating what appear to be little bubbles, like ginger ale effervesces bubbles. But in this case, these bubbles are strings, so-called superstrings. It is the tendency of this field to percolate superstrings. And we are living in a world of superstrings. I'm a tangle of them. You're a tangle of them. These superstrings are actually miniature rubber bands, extremely small, so that from a distance they look like and behave like particles. But they're more than particles. In addition to moving as a particle can move, these wiggle. Rubber bands wiggle. You can do that experiment at home. <laughs> and rubber bands wiggle in different ways, a very specific set of vibrational modes. They vibrate to the left, vibrate to the right, vibrate like this, vibrate like that. And nerds like me calculate the number of ways a rubber band can vibrate, particularly <laughs> in a 10-dimensional space-time in which these superstrings live. And they have a lot of wiggle room in which to wiggle. 
The point is, however, we're, I say we're living in a world of super strings. What does that have to do with reality? What does it have to do with electrons and quarks and gravitons and photons? Well, depending upon how a particular string is vibrating, that string mimics, mirrors, behaves as an electron. Or if it's vibrating like this, it behaves like a graviton or a photon or a quark. And there are only certain specifiable ways that a superstring can vibrate. And remarkably, as we'll see later, those vibrational tones, those vibrational modes, those specific frequencies map to the different elementary particles and forces that comprise the universe. So it's an extraordinary theory where you have one universal reality, one ocean of existence, whose various vibrational tones, like a guitar string, has certain vibrational tones, the fundamental and the harmonics. The different vibrational tones of the unified field are what we used to think of, you used to call the electron, and the quark, and the photon, and the graviton. So we're living in a world really not of particles. We're living in a symphony, in a sense, different fundamentals and harmonics of this ocean of existence, ocean of intelligence, that give the appearance of a material universe, but only from the most superficial perspective.